It's so good to hear live applause again. Uh, thank you all for joining us at our inaugural summit and making this such a success. Uh, as a reminder, you can follow along on social media using the hashtag What's Next Summit. Uh, and our next conversations are going to focus on work shifts. And I am delighted to kick this off with the Chief Purpose and Inclusion Officer for PwC in the US. She is also the leader of CEO Action, uh, the largest CEO-driven business commitment for advancing diversity and equity. Uh, welcome, Shannon Schuyler. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Like you said, amazing to actually hear this in person and not to be in a little box. So yes, it's incredible. great. Um, you're in a unique position, given your role at PwC and with CEO Action. And a lot of the future of news reporting is talking about 2022 and how it is the hardest year to lead a company. Uh, leaders are expected to weigh in on cultural and societal issues. They have to navigate new technologies uh, and trends like the Great Resignation, uh, which we've talked right, a lot or the about. Great Pivot or the Great Epiphany or all the other all ones. All of those, yes. all of those uh, trends. Uh, so, what are you seeing? How is this manifesting in the work that um, you're doing? Is it changing things, influencing things? What does it mean for you? No, I think a lot is happening, and, and I would say it's an exciting time. I think for years, we kind of, every couple of years, say these things are important and people are important, and then something happens and we take a step back. And I think we're realizing now that we're in fundamentally a different place. Our people are expecting more, and they are saying, we will leave if you do not do it. And it's not just around the edges, it's not just pay, it's not another week of vacation. It's saying we actually want to customize our jobs. We want the ability to tailor our experience specifically for us. And it was interesting, all the conversations this morning where people were talking about the need to be more thoughtful, more focused, making sure we treat people with dignity, making sure it's purpose driven. That's where we are. And that's in a different place than I think talking about talent as widgets instead of really saying that they control the destiny of the success of an organization. Yes. Uh, we absolutely believe that at Axios, that our employees are our single most important asset. Uh, and we heard earlier this morning about the importance and power and impact of being a purpose-driven organization. And in your role, I'd love to hear what that means for your day-to-day -day work. No, and, and it's an amazing role to have. And so our purpose is to build trust in society and solve important problems. And you might not tie that to a professional services firm because what we do is specific things around audit and tax work and consulting and building products, but why we do it is we believe we have the responsibility as an organization with 275,000 people to make a difference in this world. And whether that's around environmental sustainability, whether that's what we do in our communities and foundation, how we look at DNI and how we really make sure that thread of equity goes through all that we do or help one another. That all really is coming together with our purpose. And the goal now is how do you crossroads that? Mm. How do you get your people to understand purpose for them is important, and when people come into the organization, they do a purpose assessment so we can figure that oh, out. Wow. And then how do we put people on jobs based upon what their purpose is so we can show them that that purpose and those values actually intersect with the organizations to try to create that stickiness and that feeling that we're doing this and it has real meaning to it. Yeah, and speaking of all of those pieces, we also um, have learned that transparency is a critical piece of it. We lean heavily into transparency at Axios as a way of building trust. Um, but can you talk a little bit about how you've seen that and how it can also help with purpose-driven work? Absolutely, well one of the great examples is when the murder of George Floyd that night, our CEO and I got on the phone and we were talking about all the things that we wanted to do. So we had a strategy. Mm -hmm. We had a strategy around purpose and inclusion. We were gonna roll out our first transparency report the following year. We decided at about 11.30 at night that we were rolling it out in two months. Wow. Because we felt that we needed to be transparent right now to say this is where we are and we need people to know that because we need to reflect that we need to be better and we need to go the next place. And, and that gets you back to that whole thought and, and one of those great quotes of culture eats strategy for breakfast. It didn't matter how good the strategy was for our culture to truly trust each other at that pivotal time 
we had to do something to make sure that we were uplifting it. And transparency, I think, is one of those ways that builds the trust yep. and builds accountability that we need in order to make sure that we're moving forward. And it also builds uh, authenticity, which employees are always looking for as well, we find, in Absolutely. organizations. Um, and thinking about employees, uh, another thing we obsess on is employee engagement. Uh, to try to both attract, retain, unleash the, the talent that we have. Um, as, as you think about that as well, what are the ways or programs that you've assessed to actually help uh, engage employees as well, realizing they're complex, everyone needs something different? How do you figure out what you're going to implement and what is actually worthy? Well, it's such a great question because I think for so long it was easier, or we thought, right? The easy button is let's make sure everyone has the same issue and then we'll solve for that issue and everyone needs the same benefit or wants to work hard here and, and take this time off. And what I think we've realized is that's not the case. And the more that we can customize that experience, and what we've done is we've started to ask our people questions asking them how do you not just self-identify from a race, from a gender, ethnicity, but tell your story. Mm. Tell the story of who you are in the order in which you want to tell it, down to all those details so that we can understand who you are and you can let us know about your purpose and how you want to belong here. And what we need to do now as leaders is let each person find a way to live that out. So whether that is understanding additional benefits, whether that is saying that we have a model where people can be 100% virtual or work from anywhere, whether that means that you don't have to come within a practice and stay there, but you can go more fluidly and more agilely through, whether it means that you can come and you can leave for two years and have a role to come back, it's dramatically changing what we've thought about from an HR standpoint for years, where we got to have more people go on the same path because that gives us structure. Well, I think we've realized that everything is not in our control. And the more that we start to embrace that yes. and allow that to happen, the more we're gonna be able to get more from our people and more from what we're able to do overall for society. Absolutely. And as you look forward into the future, and I know we both would love to have a crystal ball. <laughs> I was gonna say. Um, but you know, what do you foresee as the biggest challenges in building trust and then maintaining trust with employees? I think the biggest challenge that I see around trust is that you have to stay consistent, mm. right? Because it takes a really long time to build it, but it leaves so quickly. And right now, I think CEOs and, and those individuals, they can't afford to stand on the sidelines for all of these different issues. Because if you stand on the sidelines, it means you don't care. Mm. And someone's gonna put something in your mouth. And I think what we have to say is we have to be in this. Our people are in it, they wanna make sure that their voices are heard, and we in turn need to make sure that we're coming up before it happens with what are we gonna do? Yeah. What are we gonna do with that legislation when it comes down? What are we gonna do if people can't travel to where they need to go to? What are we gonna do when we look at really limiting our carbon intensity? And we have to get in front of that. And I think it's really important that teams take time to map that out and know what their strategy is to make sure that that happens. Because otherwise, I think the inconsistencies is what gets you the most off track around trust. It's people will take the hard news yes. if you just say it. Yes. And if you continue down that path, immediately if you're wishy-washy, it's not gonna have any kind of sustainable outcome. Yeah. And even if they disagree with the answer, just knowing that you've been thoughtful about it, you have a reason for it, and you're willing to share that. Absolutely. Um, all right, as we get ready to wrap up, two final questions. One, what keeps you up at night? And then, what are you most hopeful about? Oh my gosh, probably both the same thing. What keeps me up at night is my nine-year-old son, <laughs> who is um, trying to figure out who he is. And so as a multi-race child, He's gone through COVID trying to decide if he wants to be black or white. Mm. And that keeps me up because that, I'm thinking, what is that going to do to our future? What is that going to do to the world that we're trying to create? On the flip side, it makes me so hopeful because he comes up with these statements of epiphanies of, oh, I can be both. And oh, I can do all of these things. And so it's seeing that we have the ability through what we do and the mentoring and fostering truly this next generation to come up. I think we have a potential that we've never had before, and that's incredibly exciting, even though a couple of sleepless nights. Yes, uh, well, I appreciate that. That's uh, <laughs> wonderful to hear both sides of that coin. Um, thank you so much thank you for this conversation, much. these insights and perspectives. I deeply appreciate it. Absolutely, and thank everyone for being here. This is pretty amazing, so thanks for that. Awesome, thank you.